Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger. And my friends, in this video, I want to show you some of the absolute best synergistic pairings of characters and cameos in Mortal Kombat 1. So obviously, fairly enough, you can pick any character with any cameo, but certain choices are certainly much more fantastical than other choices. Certain choices let you break the rules of the game. I know it's fun just to get a few more percent damage on a combo. That's always welcome, sure. But certain things, this let you do things that you just think could not be done in this game. So in this video, I'm going to give you five example pairings I think are exceptional in terms of just what they do and their synergy. And for extra fun, I'm going to make sure to not pick Serena or Cyrax because seemingly everyone's picking Serena and Cyrax, so we're gonna expand our horizons a little bit in this video. So that said, our first picks are going to be Lee Mei and Scorpion. So Scorpion is a good combo assist. I think most of us know that by now, right? And the thing about that is combos in and of themselves are kind of whatever. You can use just about any assist to give you a couple more percent on a combo. What makes Lee Mei and Scorpion exceptional together is specifically it lets her get damage off setups she normally can't get much damage from. And I'm not just talking like here's an extra 5-6-7%, I'm talking like double the normal damage. Like let's use an example here, back 3-4, which is a great tool for her. If you're unaware, it is exceptionally plus on block. So this is a move you're going to go to a lot, right? Because if it gets blocked, whatever, it's still very much your turn. But of course, every now and then, it's going to hit. And when it hits, you can't get too much off of it. Like, say, her normal EX Fireball combo extender. It's a great move. Problem is, completely whiffs on this move, right? So really, all you're getting is the knee. And, you know, 20%. That is nothing to scoff at, right? Off a plus on block move especially. But what if we took it, doubled it, and gave it to the next person, right? So now, instead of going for the knee, what we're going to do here is we're just going to change to our wheel kick. And the synergy here... Wheel Kick is in pretty good range for Scorpion to cover. And now we're going to go from 20% to 43%. More than double damage. And 43 is nothing you can scoff at. And once again, keep in mind, this is 43% damage off a plus on block mid starter move. So to say that's exceptional is underselling it. And once again, that's thanks all to Scorpion, the far Scorpion call. He has our back here since we are launching the enemy you know, a pretty far distance away, right? And if we had, say, Goro, another ambush assist, he would just keep further launching him into the corner. So it doesn't pay to our benefit. Scorpion specifically is launching the enemy back into us so we can get that big damage. Other great scenarios here besides that. So Lee Mei has serviceable low and low overhead. And basically, you're going to want to keep blocking your toes, right? Because she'll snack you just at any given moment. And the knockdown on that is so long, it guarantees her sending up a lantern, and then you have to worry about the lantern being in play. So Li Mei has an overhead that is a special move here, and you can do it incredibly low to the ground. Like, to the point where it is not humanly reactable. If you are already blocking low, you are simply going to get hit. That is it. And the enhanced version, specifically, has a bit of a flip kick. And... Although the enemy is barely off the ground, they are airborne technically for a split second. And there we go. So now 32% off the one meter. So normally, you know, we'd get 13%, which you know, isn't awful for unseeable instant overhead. But more than double the damage in this scenario where, like, they simply are not going to be able to react. That's pretty fair. So Scorpion is taking situations where Lee Mei, it's part of her game plan. She will do these regardless. You have to do it. That's why you're picking this character, right? But he can do more than just add a couple percent. He can double the damage output on these very common scenarios. And of course, as always, you can just get more damage on regular combos, right? Like say you have no meter to burn. He can still give you 35% on a regular combo starter, right? So that's pretty all right. So yeah, you get more damage anyways. That's good. But in a lot of Lee Mei specific scenarios, Scorpion doubles plus her damage output. So that's what makes him really exceptional for her. So another case of exceptional synergy is Ashra and Goro. So Goro is another character with a great ambush call, specifically the up punch here. And one of the things about it is he'll appear anywhere on the screen you want him. And unlike, say, Scorpion, he will hit grounded opponents. And that's part of it. 
So Ashra has a really good overhead in four three, but it's a uh, depending on the distance, maybe not the most safe, right? But you can do this, call Goro, and it's twofold. If it connects, well then awesome, right? Uh, Goro launches and you get combos. And there we go, nice little chunk of change, right? Now on defense is the real thing. Now normally you are allowed to cancel into this. And so if you want to go for that launcher, uh, as you can see, negative 37, you're going to get blown up to say the least. But if you do this with the Goro call, they'll be stuck in block stun. And depending on how early you call Goro, they might be a little negative, which is definitely a lot better than punishable. And uh, if you call Goro a little bit later, you'll actually have a good amount of advantage frames. So it all depends on your tightness of the Goro call. But regardless, however it works, plus frames, negative frames, you are definitely safe on block versus dead on block. If you go for it and fully commit and they block it, right? So Goro lists you basically to see how things are going to go. If you get it, you get it. Great. And if you didn't, no rush, no worries. No consequence. Asher also has several strings, like 1-2-2, two, 4-4-2-3, two, four, four, two, that knock the enemy back, but they are not special cancelable, so you can't combo by yourself. But of course, with your pal Goro, he'll give you that launcher. And even if you're a little far away, Ashra has got the range, so it is not hard for her to connect at all, right? So he gives more value to certain strings that otherwise are just there to push the enemy back. Ashra, one of her main aspects is the poke game, and her pokes are very long range, much longer than most of the cast, and therefore she's also really good at counter poking. And the thing about her and counter pokes is a lot of her main pokes play very well with Goro's back throw, actually. Now, normally it can't hit a standing opponent. Uh, it can only hit someone crouching or crouch blocking, but when someone's in a hit stun state, Goro can throw you. So all of a sudden, the quick poke becomes a long range Goro grab. And naturally enough, I shouldn't have to tell you, but that leads to combo opportunities and, you know, almost 40% off a of poke. Like, most characters could not dream of getting that kind of damage from ranges that far away. Ashra can do it. Another interesting aspect of Ashra is her uppercut game. This is uh, directly predicated on her fireball. So it's slow, yes, but it is a mid. It can be somewhat difficult to jump. And the thing about it is the slowness is all in the startup. She actually recovers very fast. Like, look how fast she jumps after the fact, right? So say Kung Lao here, he's going to attempt to jump our fireball. And he can easily enough, sure. But the problem is, I recover too fast. And if I can get that uppercut here, our pal Goro loves to help out. And there you have it. It's almost like we're playing Street Fighter. I throw the fireball. I'm anticipating you jumping the fireball. Sure enough, you go into my uppercut, as it were. And Goro, being the helpful friend that he is, lets you get a lot more damage off that base uppercut. So that's another great, fantastic point of synergy. And hey, speaking of points of synergy, Goro lets her combo off her back throw. So if you time him right, he'll launch the enemy right into you and you can get combos. Now to specifically note, when you interrupt the throw with a cameo, you will get the combo, as you can see here, right? Plain as day, but it will be heavily scaled and won't do as much damage as it normally would, but fair enough because we just got 24% off a of back throw, which normally does only 11%, thanks to Goro, right? So that is fantastic synergy. And you could say that makes Ashra a grappler light. Her back throw is now much scarier because you're gonna lose about a quarter of your life every time she lands it if she has Goro up. So that's some idea of some fun synergies with her and Goro. He lets her get damage off strings that are not special cancelable normally. So her damage output would just be nothing. Now you get a full combo. It allows her to do some fun situations in neutral that she can't otherwise get. It gives her, like, effectively a grappler light off her back throw, which is fantastic. And just some really fun things to work with besides just more damage in combo. So here's one I'm a really big fan of. General Shao and Kung Lao. So, specifically, it has to do with two things. The hat, the low hat, and the teleport. So, he does have the combo starter spin, which is alright. If you start combos with it, like, you will assuredly get a few more points of damage than you would otherwise, but that's not the real attraction here. So, first, let's start with the teleport. So, the teleport, one, shall we know, he's a little deficient at a range, like, he has a technical projectile, but assuredly, he's not winning any fireball wars. Thankfully, though, he does have a little hat for that, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but the teleport lets him get in, and that's good. And in case you're unaware, the startup of the teleport is armored, by the way. So... Let's see, get around all sorts of shenanigans. Also, 
It can save you when you've already been hit. By the way, if your call is somewhat fortuitous, like right here, Scorpion went from winning to... He's dead, <laughs> you know, like, so it's really handy in certain situations. But the big deal with the teleport is his F2 overhead. So he has canned overhead string and it does 15%. Now, it's, it's respectable for what it is, considering Shao is very openly got the 50-50 mix up. He has a low that hits in 20 frames and he has an overhead that hits in 20 frames. So no fuzzy guarding nonsense for you. They hit in the exact same frame. So the low is allowed to go into the launcher starter. So that means you can get applicable damage from that. And you know, it's decent for what it is, right? But the overhead is not cancelable into anything. Like you are stuck in the animation. You do the follow up or nothing. You cannot special cancel. Unlike many other normals, uh, you cannot cancel into an assist call. You just go for the overhead. That's it. And if you don't, then you just get stuck in this animation. But teleports are ambushes and they will rip you out of whatever animation you're doing no matter what including this long recovery. So that means we call teleport instead of getting 15%. We can get a lot more than that. We can get 32%, uh, effectively doubling our damage output on the move. So the teleport makes the threat of the overhead much scarier than what it is because you can double your damage output. So that's one aspect, that's the mix. And uh, Motaro with his teleport can also give you that mix, by the way. But here's what Motaro cannot do. Low Hat. Low Hat is uh, an amazing move. One, it gives him a decent ranged option because it is a very fast projectile, travels the screen very quick. The assist uh, recharge on this is insane for what it is. So you can spam it all the time. And as a fireball, since it's a low, you can't just like neutral duck it. You have to actually block and deal with it, which is great. Also helps the strings, like say back one two, right? Mid overhead. What if it was mid low instead? The hat lets you be mid low. So it gives you a bit of a can mix here, right out of the gate here. Am I going with the overhead or am I going with the low, right? And the low, by the way, also has enough uh, hit stun that it effectively guarantees him going for the big swing on back two. So if I tag you, better start blocking because this is coming your way. So that utility is great, but let's talk the real deal here. Xiao has several strings that cause an enhanced splat state, like a back three, two, they splat out big time, forward four is a big crumple state here. And once you get one of these bad boys off, you can call Kung Lao and hold the assist. You can delay it. It only goes when you let go of the cameo button. So now let's look at this move here. Forward four, back hat. Now on hit, as you can see, it doesn't combo, which is unfortunate, I suppose. But if it knocks down, you can go right into your hat hold. Oh, and by the way, on block, it's a true block string. No gap, you cannot interrupt it. And low hat is plus on block too, by the way. So you can do this. Oh no, I'm plus on block anyways. I'll go for like a sweep or something, right? So don't worry, if, if you get blocked, you're good to go. But now let's take our scenario here. Forward four, which is like round start range for 20 frames, which is pretty friggin' good. And we'll cancel into our hat. Then if it's blocked, it'll hit and we'll be plus on block anyways, whatever. And if it hits, it's mix up time. So I'll do this, set up the hat, jump. And once again, I can let go of the hat whenever I want. So there's a low prime to go whenever I want. And hey, also, what if I just jump in and hit you with an overhead? And right there, oops, overhead low. Well, I'll be a good boy and block both within like the two or three frames I got, right? Well, the thing about that is... Now it's a little overhead, right? So in a couple situations, but forward four is going to be our example here. Forward four hat, Shao gets an immediate 50-50 mix. You have to guess low overhead or overhead low. The opponent cannot possibly know. It is predicated entirely on you letting go of the hat. So say you guess wrong or just weren't fast enough to react, which is also a very distinct possibility. It's just legitimately hard to react to, right? What's our reward for guessing wrong or being too slow? Whoops, we effectively ate 40%, right? And every time Xiao plants that hat down, this is what's on the table, basically. So I think I can appreciate upon you how strong this setup is, because once again, they are waking up into it in this specific setup with 4-4. And since this is coming off a jump, this setup, the majority of armored reversals in the game will just go clear under you, so keeping you safe in that way. Not all of them, but most of them. So hat gives us better neutral, because it gives us a real projectile to work with versus uh, this sad state of affairs 
It gives us a much stronger overhead, and it gives us, in multiple ways, an incredibly powerful, very difficult to deal with 50-50 game that leads to a lot of damage. So for this reason, I think Shao with Kung Lao is exceptional. Now, another pairing I think is very, very strong is Raiden and Jax. And this one is as simple as it gets. It's just damage. Now, normally, I'm not the biggest fan of just picking the cameo for damage, but in this pairing, this exception, man, it's uh, overwhelming. Let me give you an example. So that's 45% damage. Now, I know you've seen higher damage in other combo videos and all kinds of stuff, right? But 45% and uh, the one thing you might not have noticed is I didn't even spend a bar. I didn't spend one piece of meter to do this. That is 45% damage meterless. And sure, yes, I could spend meter on the combo and get a few more points of damage at that point. And it would just be a couple more points of damage scaling really kicks in in these combos that are longer. But since you can get such titanic damage off any basic hit, like, hey, Raiden has a good quick low uh, combo starter, right? And safe on block two, naturally. And I think if you slightly get, you know, hit by those toe taps, you're effectively done, though. Like, that's a scary thought. Like, that's terrifying. That's still 44% with a lesser damage starter, right? And once again, no meter spent. And Jack's backbreaker, for what it is, recharges pretty quick. Like, every time you get a clean hit, you can rest assured you'll have almost certainly both Jack's calls ready to go and getting that Titanic damage in. But the big thing and why I'm harping on why it's meterless damage is since you don't have to spend meter, that means you have more effective health. Jax already gives you bonus health. Like, look at Raiden. Raiden gets an extra 100 health for having Jax, right? And since you don't spend meter, you'll have that meter ready for the combo breaker, which means you even have more effective health yet. If you don't have to spend meter on offense, that means you purely get to save it for defense. Either combo breakers or armored reversals. And that's great. That's like a change of the dynamic. Usually, if you want your damage, you got to give up some bar and that's give up some of your defensive options. Raiden and Jax, you don't. You get the big boy damage, much bigger than a lot of characters, even with like two assist calls and burning meter. So you, you out damage those people and don't got to spend anything in return. So if you're looking just to play proper Mortal Kombat without necessarily all the gimmicks of calling uh, cameos in and neutral and all that kind of stuff, you just want to do your thing, and when you get your hit, you hit hard, then Raiden and Jax is that team. And our last pairing I would like to highlight is Reiko and Darius. So Reiko is nominally supposed to be the grappler of the game, but legitimately, it's not that impressive. It's still a high, uh, and it does the exact same damage as a regular throw. You just can't tech the grab, right? So that's something, I guess, but it doesn't... You know, invoke the fear of God into you, right? It's not like uh, you're beside Zangief in Street Fighter. That's terrifying. Reiko giving you a dunk? Eh, it's kind of whatever. But what Darius does is he lets him become that scary dunk master. So Reiko, when you do the command grab, you have the option to let it rock, and you'll switch sides, or you can hold the same side. And if you hold the same side, you keep the enemy just up slightly longer, their feet in the air than usual. And hey, wouldn't you know it, that's exactly long enough for Darius to hit him. Now, the thing about this is, unlike, say, the earlier examples in the videos like Ashra and Goro, when a command grab has an assist hit after the fact, it does not cause advanced scaling. So now, we're going from 11% on that grab. And if we want to, say, spend one bar... We're going from 11% to 38%. Now that's something Zangief could be proud of. Now all of a sudden, if you knew there was a 38% damage grab coming your way, you'd probably put more respect on Reiko's grab, wouldn't you? And this now makes that mid grab he has, when you spend two bars, much more deadly. Now it's not that it's gonna do much more damage, because you already spent two bars, right? So uh, you'll get a clean 40% this time, so a couple percent more. But keep in mind, it's a mid. So say you block that back fist from Reiko, that's plus eight. Now, normally if he goes for that grab, you are able to duck. So if you do this here and you block that back fist and you immediately like down one, you will avoid that grab. But against the mid grab, you can't. You literally have no option other than to jump, just like a classic Street Fighter, right? Right now, 
I'm plus eight, I'm gonna go for a 10 frame mid grab. There is simply no button you have that's fast enough to get out of that to beat it, right? So you gotta jump it. And if you didn't, well, you're gonna learn that lesson really quick now, aren't we, right? Because that's a lot of damage. And let me assuage your fears here. I already know you're wondering, well, what if you had all the resources in the tank? Well, if you had all the resources in the tank, it's gonna hurt. Sixty-two percent. Even Saint Geef can't do that. So, yeah, Reiko and Darius, the grab. It's a pretty sweet deal. Don't worry. Uh, it's not just a gimmick with the throw, right? Reiko and Darius lets you do all the cool, fun Darius mix-up stuff as well. So, there's synergy there on top of. Letting the command grab become the grab it needs to be. So since Darius turns Reiko into an actual scary grappler, I think that synergy is proven right out of the gate. And that's five choices from me. Of course, there's always room for discussion on the matter, right? Some people think other characters will be better with other cameos, and that's the nature of the game. That's why the game's so well designed, in my opinion. So that said, in the comments below, post what characters you think go good with which cameos. Do you got sick combos? Do you got sick setups? Let everyone know in the comments below. And otherwise, well, now we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Mortal Kombat.